When it comes to gates, it seems like there might be a bunch of stuff going on. You may see a race going on on the track while preparing for your race. You may see you have riders to the left and right of you. You might hear announcing going on. You may hear the starter giving you a heads up. You may feel anxious, excited, prepared, or unprepared. How can we get you to feel comfortable in the gate so that you can execute the gate with complete competence and confidence and perhaps make the gate one of your strongest skills on the track? Let's talk about it. Welcome to the channel. Make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you can get notified when I go live and also when I load every week. Now, when it comes to your gate start, there seems like there's a bunch of stuff going on. Whether you're a newer rider, a younger rider, or one who doesn't get the race often, therefore doesn't get enough repetition to move from conscious incompetence to conscious competence. Let me give you the three things you can start doing in an effort to overcome any issues you may have at the gate start and getting you to do gates like a professional. First off, when it comes to your gait, you always want to go back to the fundamentals and make sure you are competent in the fundamental areas. Are you comfortable with balancing in the gait? Great. Are you comfortable with others around you to the left and right of you? Are you comfortable when you're balancing on the gate and there's a bunch of things going on? So let's work on balancing at home away from the track. Let's work on this skill first. Put on some flat pedals and work on balancing against the wall and start working on finding your balance. If you could do this, if you could do this on flat ground, you could certainly do it on an angled starting gate. Doing this at home is better than doing at the track because there is less distraction and you can get as much practice as you want. Number two, do you know what the first movement is? And are you able to commit to it? Now, when it comes to gate starts, my method is pretty simple. Lead with the head and shoulders first. Get the shoulders over the handlebar grips. Stay there and continuously start pedaling. And you could do this at home while you're balancing. You can practice balancing and also executing the first movement simultaneously. And once you're competent with the basics of balancing and knowing what the first movement is and what it feels like, then it's time to go back out to the track and start practicing that. All right, number three. Number three is one of my favorites, and this is a little bit more advanced, okay? So for you newer riders, bear with me. Number three, we're gonna focus on focusing. What does focus mean to you? Does it mean get in the gate and stare at the gate? Does it mean stare at the race that's happening on the track? Does it mean looking to the riders to the left and right of you? What does focusing mean to you? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments below. What does focusing mean to you? For me and my Olympic riders and also my riders in my Winter Circle program, this means accessing and getting in their performance mind state. Now, what is a performance mind state, you may ask? Isn't that like your mindset? Well, not really. Your mindset consists of your values and beliefs. And while it can influence your mind state, it's best to know what your mind state is first. Your mind state consists of thoughts and feelings that are going through your head and through your body. Most of the time, BMX athletes just let what they see, what they hear, what they feel dictate their mind state. And these are the athletes that seem to have the most performance anxiety. And then there's other riders that just like to keep it simple. They just go for the whole shot, right? They just get up in the gate and they focus on getting the whole shot and that's it. For the rest of us, my hands raised up with you especially for newer and younger riders. My hand's raised up with you as well. Some of us that don't necessarily have our performance mind state perfected or configured or working. We have to figure out what works best for us. Okay, so what does that mean? Does that mean, is it being excited for you? Is it being relaxed? Is it, is it being aggro and just wanting to kill the competition? <laughs> I used to have an athlete that wanted to kill the competition. It, it, it worked sometimes and sometimes it didn't, but 
It, it was very incon inconsistent, I'll tell you that much. Or maybe perhaps you're timid of the competition or you're, you're timid of the loud air ram or you're timid of the announcing that's happened on the track. Gate slamming down here. Maybe you're uncertain. Maybe you're doubtful. Maybe you're, you're doubtful of your abilities. Maybe you're in a fearful state and that's not resourceful to you because you're not giving it your all, are you? When it comes to accessing the ideal performance mind state, you have to understand the concept of anchoring, okay? Anchoring is not like dropping an anchor into the ocean. Anchor, anchoring is basically a trigger, right? It's basically a trigger that allows you to access your desired mind state. Sometimes it's something that you see like a word or, you know, something. sometimes it's like seeing a word on the back of your number plate. Maybe perhaps it's something, something that you hear, like words that you say to yourself. Maybe it's your, it's your self-talk that's happening in your head. Maybe it's just simply something kinesthetic right before you get in the gate. Maybe it's just slapping your hands, right? Or, or doing the Michael Phelps thing. And Michael Phelps likes to do other things that, that trigger his self to get into the desired performance mind state. What anchoring does, it allows you to access your ideal performance mind state, and that allows you to perform at your best. Anchoring is something weird. It's something that you're gonna have to work on at home. You're gonna have to figure out what works best for you. Sometimes it just comes down to recalling a time, recalling a specific time where you were able to get an awesome gait, where you were perhaps in an empowered mind state. Maybe perhaps you were, you were definitely confident. Maybe you were excited right? You definitely don't want to trigger unresourceful mind states that caused you anxiety, fear, doubt, uncertainty, especially fear of crashing, things like that. There's a lot of younger riders that seem to have, and they get, they're anchored. As soon as they get into the gate, they're triggered to automatically get in this fight or flight mode and access this fearful mind state. And that fearful mind state it prohibits and inhibits them from performing, you know? They're not giving it their all. Perhaps they're gonna hit their brakes right before the first jump. Perhaps they're just gonna let the gate drop and let everyone go, and then they're gonna go. Unbeknownst to them or a younger rider, they don't realize it's hard to come from behind in a bike race, <laughs> especially BMX. So you have to figure out what is your ideal mind state and more importantly, figuring out what the anchor is that you could trigger, okay, to get yourself in control so you could perform at your best. All right. So there you have it. After talking to many of you guys over here at BMX Training, you know, some of you guys are having a hard time balancing. Some of you guys are having a hard time committing to the first movement. Some of you guys are having a hard time getting over the fear, the doubt, the uncertainty, right? Accessing the performance mind state. So these are my three best things that you guys could start working on now and start integrating that into your BMX racing so you can enjoy the sport more and have some success. I'm curious, what are you guys doing in an effort to improve your gate start? Leave a comment below and I'll see you guys in the next video.